Hey guys, welcome back to AMTM Fam. Thanks so much for coming along with us again today. If you guys have been following our story, you will know that we are in a little bit of a transition period right now between having our boat tied to the dock and moving out to a mooring in the middle of the Pongo Pongo Harbor. And while I would love to be able to give you an update, which is what I was hoping to be able to give you guys this week, our story is not complete. <laughs> so we are still waiting on a few more parts to the process and then we should be good to give you a resolution to our story of where we're going to end up. <laughs> So I decided to take this opportunity to tell you something that we've been getting quite a few questions about and also something that I'm excited to tell you about. And that is starting a business here in American Samoa. As with lots of things on the island, there is a certain process to be followed, which includes a fair amount of red tape and kind of going here and there. And so to make it easier for anybody who is interested or even just curious about starting a business here in American Samoa, I figured I'd lay it all out and make it easier on you. Now I'm able to share this information with you because I actually just recently, about six months ago, started a business. While this YouTube channel and our AmSam Fam brand might seem to you like a fun thing we do to be able to share our adventures and our life here on the islands, we have actually made it into a full-on business. Now just so we're all clear, YouTube channels are not very profitable. <laughs> not until you get hundreds of thousands or millions of followers. But to have a successful YouTube channel and successful brand, it does help to treat it as a business. And once we came out with our AmSam Fam merch and once I started distributing copies of the travel guide Explore American Samoa here on island, I was informed that we needed to have this a business license to be able to do these things from American Samoa. <laughs> My experience now can be used to help others, maybe you, um, who may be looking at doing something similar, whether or not it's a YouTube channel any kind of business that you're looking to start or run from American Samoa, you will need to go through this process also. All right, let's get started. There are a few things that you may want to consider doing before you even start down the process of obtaining a business license. Now, the first thing is market research. And the market here in American Samoa is pretty unique. It's an island and so it's very insular and it is influenced by other markets but within the islands here of American Samoa it behaves a little bit differently than maybe other markets that you may be used to. So some resources that you may be able to use to help you with your market research. You could look into the American Samoa Department of Commerce for data on economics and on statistics and all these I'll have links down below in the description. So you can click down there to get more information into any of these websites. Another great resource is the United States Census Bureau, specifically looking at the County Business Pattern Survey and the Economic Census. And if you are looking to find data that's more specific to your business here in American Samoa, we have a really great resource. In case you don't know, my husband, Nate, he has actually started up an economic consulting firm called South Pacific Consulting. So we came to American Samoa on contract where Nate was working for the Department of Commerce as the territorial economist. At this point, he's got almost five years of experience working in and around. He's been working with government and lots of privately owned businesses here in American Samoa. So not to plug in too much, but honestly, if you need data that's specific to your business, he would be the best resource to be able to get a hold of him. And I'll include a link to his website and contact information for you too, if you're interested in that. 
The next step you want to take is creating a business plan. Now I am so not an expert in this. <laughs> I'm not even very good at it. And so um, I won't tell you how to do it, but there are so many resources online. There are hundreds, if not more videos on YouTube that you could look up of how to create a business plan for your individual and unique business. You could look at the U.S. Small Business Administration website where they lay it out step by step how to create a business plan. And the last two things I will touch on just real quick are obtaining capital for your new business. And probably the best place to do that locally here would be the Territorial Bank of American Samoa or TBAS. I just recently went and opened up a business account with them and it was easy, it was quick. Everybody there is super friendly and very helpful. Again, no sponsorship here, just letting you guys know that they were a great resource for that. And they open up more opportunities to be able to get future funding, whether it's through business loans or through federal grants that they can help you work through. Okay, so you've done your market research, you've got your business plan, you've looked into funding and you've gotten here on the ground, if that's possible, and you are ready to legally become a business here in American Samoa. Okay, to do this, you are going to have to go to the American Samoa Department of Commerce, and that is in the executive office building right in Utile. Now, one thing that's a little bit different here in American Samoa than what we were used to seeing in other places was that depending on what your business is, you may have to get multiple business licenses. And so for me, for Amsium Fan, being able to sell our travel guide here to some of the local stores for you guys to be able to get your hands on here locally um, i needed the distributor license and to be able to sell our merch and other things like the books online through amazon i needed the online retail license and so we know people who have you know a business but they might need even as many as six or more individual business licenses to cover all the aspects of their business. So keep that in mind as you are thinking about what your business is going to be and what all the different aspects of it are going to be as well. So once you go into Department of Commerce and you fill out the application, they will ask you where your business is going to be physically located. And so even though I do all my work from my laptop, I still had to declare a physical location, which for me is my home. Which for me, my home is about <laughs> in the Pongo Pongo Harbor. And so it's a little bit different for us getting our business licenses but say you're going to have a retail space or an actual physical location, you will have to declare where that's going to be. And so for some zoning, like I had to do this, I had to go down to public works for them to literally get out a map and zone my location for being able to conduct business from my home. And through that process, it may or may not include site visits. So just keep in the, that in mind as far as the timing and how long this process is going to take. Another thing you're going to need to do is get some sort of workman's comp insurance. Depending on where you're coming from, that might just come out automatically in your unemployment tax that you pay through your federal taxes each year. But here in American Samoa, it's a little bit different. You will need to go through and get private insurance to cover your workman's comp. Now, because I don't have any employees, I do it all myself. <laughs> I haven't had to get workman's comp, but I do know of two locations here locally that can help you get the workman's comp insurance, and that is Ito Insurance and National Pacific Insurance, or NPI. And so you can look into either of those, then you will need to go back over to the executive office building, go down to Treasury, pay the fee for your license, and then to get back up to Department of Commerce to give them the receipt, and then you wait for a couple of weeks. Department of Commerce will let you know when it has gone through and where, when it's been approved and you'll be able to go pick up your brand new business license for your business. 
Now, two last things I want to cover real quick talking about accounting. So once you've got your business going and you are looking at payroll or taxes, any of that kind of thing, there are a couple of accounting firms here. But I will tell you this, that if you are an accountant or if you are currently going to school for an accountant uh, to get an accounting degree and you have ever wanted to live in a beautiful tropical paradise, you would be more than welcome here. <laughs> We have some really great accounting firms here on island, but over the last few years I've heard that a few places either they're retiring or closing up shop. So the accounting firms we do have here on island are really, really busy and they are great at what they do and we appreciate them so much, but I know that there's still a need for for more services like that. And so the two that I really know of, we have worked with May and Associates and she has been so great. She's done her taxes every year and because we haven't had to worry about payroll, but she's been really great for that. And I know other businesses who use her and her team for their payroll. And the other location I know of is Dan King Accountants. And while I haven't used them personally, I know that Nate has in previous positions he has had, as well as other businesses here on island that they have used them too and have good things to say about them. And so anybody else, let me know down in the comments, let, share it with everybody if there are other accountants here on island. Those are just the two that we know of, but there could be other accountants who are also really great at what they do. And then the last thing to consider if you are thinking of starting a business here in American Samoa is your space, your physical location. So if you have watched our housing or our transportation, cost of living videos, you'll know that we don't have Craigslist here or any kind of rental agency. And so to be able to find a space that you can rent or lease to be able to conduct business out of, it is going to be a lot of word of mouth. You may be able to find something on one of the Facebook marketplace groups like American Samoa Deals and Steals or 684 Buy Sell Trade. You may be able to see something or hop on there and request information on a space. But a couple of places that I know are Teddy of Samoa, Pongo Plaza, the Halleck Professional Building, Lao Fo Shopping Center, and so same thing, if you know of any space that is available for renting or leasing for business, make sure to let us know down in the comments so that other people will have that resource and that information as well. All right, guys, that was a lot of information. I hope that for those of you who are looking at starting a business here, or maybe you have already started a small business, but looking to make it legal and official, that this information has been helpful in making it a little more seamless and easy for you to be able to get all the documents and everything that you need to officially start a business here in American Samoa. Now again, I'll just repeat, if you have any other information, any other resources that you would like to share, please include it in the comments down below. I will have links to the websites and other resources that I mentioned in the description down below so you can go check those out and click through to be able to get an idea of what you can find online as well. But that's all for today. At least I think that that's everything. <laughs> Hopefully next week we will be settled into our new semi-permanent spot here on our sailboat and I'll be able to bring you that update next week if we've gotten it all figured out by then. But for now I'm going to say tofa soy fua. Everybody have a great week. Another great resource is the United States Census Bureau specifically looking at the county blah business path specifically looking at the county <laughs> business pattern survey business pattern survey specifically looking at the county business pattern survey and the economic census now the two